Get it going. Yeah, so All right, right. now that we're here, we can start. We are supportive. So I think you can. Who knows what ARPA means? means? Yes. ARPA is the American Rescue Plan Act. Yes. All right, very good. <laughs> That's going to be my Thank first you. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven o'clock. Are we going to cookie? We're going to get started. Everybody get set. Um, there's three, we're three volunteers for the town. We're on the ARPA committee, and we'll show you what we do. And feel free to ask questions at any time. We have slides. I'm not going to read these slides for you. I think everybody here can read them, but I'll just hit the high points. Um, here's our agenda. We did receive funds. We actually have received the funds already. Oh. Um, half of them. I think it might be all of them now, but um, they, they are um, sitting in a bank. They're real. Um, it is an opportunity for the town um, as I've read through the town plan and the um, R3 committee, I don't know if anybody was involved with those in the past, but we have tons of ideas of projects. Um, but it just seems they never really get momentum. So now this is the ARPA funds are kind of seed money for these projects, and we're looking for input. So uh, this meeting, basically, the agenda is to go through the process of how to apply for funds, if you have specific projects you're interested in. Um, how to submit that, and um, that's it. Really, it's, um, we don't need to, this is big for me, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, we're not doing anything new, we have a process to get the, um, your ideas submitted. Um, if they align with the town plan especially, or the R3 or projects that have already been thought out or planned, um, that will help you as well as far as um, getting your, your project admitted. And I know you probably have a lot of questions from this, but I think most of those will get answered as we go through these. So um, I'm not going to read all this. this. This is the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. There was $350 billion spread out throughout the country, throughout the state. Um, our funds are not listed here, but it's roughly about $1.4 million. It works out to about $300 per person. So why don't we just give out $300? Well, because we'd like to- So we're gonna set with everybody that's here in this room tonight. <laughs> I thought somebody would have that idea. Just give me the $300. Some states have done that. Have they really? Uh, well, we're trying to, you know, our, our idea is to have projects benefit, and we have a really creative community with all kinds of projects already, um, ideas, and, you know, we just want to collect those and fund the ones that make the most sense. So, oh, here it is. $1.37 million from the federal government. Um, I'll go through that. These are the folks on the committee. Uh, the town manager, Trevor Lashua, is leading it up. Perry's on the select board. Um, the three of us are here, Mary, I'm sorry, Maria, uh, Matt, and myself. That's very important stuff. The scope, um, again, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically um, this, the, the purpose of this meeting is to let you know what's available, and the bottom line is to show you how to um, apply for the grants, and if you have any questions regarding that. Did I miss anything so important here? Or is that what tonight is? Yes, that, that's what this is for also. Yep. For feedback, questions, and the process. Yep. And yeah, feel free, especially after we've talked, to give us feedback on um, what you think we can do. So one of the things that this yep. reminds me of at, at our meetings. Uh, Funds are to be used equitably. So we're trying, and this is one of the reasons that we had a meeting here, Randolph Center, and down in the village. We want everybody, East Randolph, Randolph Center, to understand that we want uh, our, the, the projects to be developed uh, to be from in, from any place in the town. You know, but it has to. But basically, the project has to be. Uh, basically utilized, be able to be utilized by the whole town. So a project that's very specific <coughs> might not be the highest priority in us choosing the project. However, if it's low dollars and it, it's very focused, that might be acceptable too. But something that's very focused and takes a lot of the money probably would not. Mm -hmm. 
be very well received. And, and I want to point out also that this funding, the 1.37 million, is Randolph. It's not Braintree, they have their own money. It's not Brookfield, they have their own money. So it truly is Randolph. Yeah, Randolph Village, Randolph Center, East Randolph, North Randolph. And we don't want to leave anybody out, so. West Randolph. <laughs> yeah. We're West Randolph. Randolph Village is West Randolph. Mm -hmm. There's a South Randolph though, right? Yes. There's a sign for it. Yeah, there's South Randolph, North uh -huh. Randolph. Okay. Yeah, could I say, I didn't say South? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> we don't see that. We don't want to leave anybody out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Where are you living? I live in East Randolph. Oh, okay. I'm shooting South Randolph. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so does right the organization street. have to be affiliated with the town of Randolph? Like, because I'm a Braintree resident, but I'm involved with a lot of things that could potentially. Yeah, if it benefits the town. But yeah. that that's a good point. Um, I, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so it's like I'm an individual doing a pet project, but it is something versus like someone on the bike ped committee for Randolph. Yeah, no, I think that's fine to submit it. And, and if not, I'm sure you're working with other people if it has to be a Randolph resident, but I, it's really if it benefits the town. It's a Randolph project. It's right. just a Randolph yeah. downtown. Yeah. I mean, so okay, right. No, I think yeah. you're fine, Miranda. Right? Yeah. Don't just don't tell me, but everyone thinks you're in Randolph anyway. I thought you lived in Randolph. Yeah, no. all, all the out-of-towners out need to sit in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the funds would not, no, no, no. it wouldn't go to construct a project or do something in Braintree. Right. 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 It, would it doesn't be matter if the yeah. sponsor of it is somebody from outside mm -hmm. of Randolph. Right. It's okay. Right. So they're strategic and focused on making the highest and best use of one-time funds. And Question. Yes. What do you mean by strategic? Benefit. Um, I would say, um, you know, just benefit. It's really beneficial for the town and strategic would mean maybe focusing on what's in the town plan already th things that you've looked at uh, maybe um, focused on I think strategic education. also means having a strategy to actually yeah. well, like implement strategy yeah. for the implementation what, yeah, what I think strategic means in there is that you're looking at a lot of pieces mm -hmm. so if you have a project that can be you know that's good for the town that's focusing on resiliency. Remember, this is all from COVID money mm -hmm. and related to the, the, uh, the resiliency that we need in, in a town if we have another pandemic or if we have another Irene, you know, that's what it is. But looking at other sources possible, complete, if you've got resources from other places, so that's kind of, and you need a little bit more, this is strategies that you're using to kind of make things work. That's a good point. That these you. funds originally originated during COVID, and the original idea was to um, make up for some, you know, local businesses that may have lost money, uh, that weren't able to stay open, or um, road project, not specifically road projects, but community projects, building projects, educational projects that weren't funded. Technology, um, health, and wellness. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. 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 And yeah, we'll have some slides with some specifics. This is all just the introduction, basically. But this is the process. Stage one is to form the committee, which has been done. Um, we, we worked on the information, the key information to select. It's a two process, selection process, basically. The first process, this form is really pretty simple. Uh, it's just what you want to do, approximately how much. But we do ask that you do put some time into that and figure out um, how you're going to get your project done, do a good project definition, and try to be as accurate as you can with how much it's going to cost. Because if, if you put in for a project and it, you think it might cost 5000 but it ends up costing $50,000, um, that's a project that um, may not go through. So. And the criteria that, that yeah. none of you have in front of me, in front of you, except for you, does have slots. We're, we're going right. to we're getting ahead of the game here by this yeah. talking about this, but basically it has money slots. Uh, how much money do you want? Is it in this category, ten to something thousand, fifty thousand, three hundred thousand over that? It's it's different categories that you will choose as you make this application. And right. it's so, online too. This is an online form. Thank you. Have a yeah. paper form so you can look at it, but yeah. it's online. And we'll show you the it's link before we leave how to access it online and fill it out online if you'd like to do it that way as well. So and this is called phase one. Um, that's the phase one form. Um, we'll take those and evaluate those. We'll keep track of all projects, whether they're accepted or not. 
Um, and our committee is tasked with um, picking the projects that have the most benefit for the community. At that point, we'll probably have another meeting where we present that to the community. Um, I don't know for sure. This, this meeting is actually pretty well, very well attended compared to the first one. <laughs> but um, this is roughly the people that have been to our meetings so far. So if you have a specific project, you know, depending on the project, as long as you're not using all the funds, I think you have a pretty good chance of, of getting your project approved if you do a good job of um, describing it. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Well, when, when your committee has had meetings, I'm assuming. We've been meeting since February, March. Yeah. Um, did you kind of, did you sort of define what you mean by good for the town? Like, are you talking, I mean, there was a lot of talk about children in the, be in the beginning and how much, how difficult it was for them to be home and yeah. not being nowhere to congregate safely. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of talk about we needed more maybe outdoor spaces so that we could have meetings, but they're outdoors, but maybe under some kind of a pavilion or, you know, those are the kinds of things that I thought maybe um, Every, everything this you just said money is, was yeah, is uh, toward making life a little bit yep. easier should this continue to recur. Exactly. Right. And I think it all depends on who comes forward with what projects. That right. kind of, yeah. That's all now on us to decide together and for this board to manage who comes right. forward with what ideas. And the rest of the slides will talk about that. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're, yeah. we're getting there. Yeah, and that's probably what we should do is go through the presentation and have most questions at the end because I think a lot of what you're bringing up is probably okay. here already. So. Um, and here we're getting, we're zeroing in a little bit more right now, but um, these are the basic principles, good governments, um, leverage your aid, invest in best uses for long term. Again, that's kind of what you're saying. It's a little broad, but I think we can, you know, we'll know um, those projects. But basically, that's um, what we're looking for. That, that kind of leverage your ARPA aid, what, what that's referring to is if there's projects that have other funding sources and those funding sources might require matches, this can be used as a match. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so that that's that, those projects will be looked upon pretty highly, I think. Yep. And we want to get as many people as we can involved and get the ideas um, for the different stakeholders. Um, there's actually a lot of um, it's it's pretty broad what can be approved. It's not um, specifically education. It's not specifically weatherization. Um, community development, parks and recreation. Um, it, you know, the overall fund is to make your community more resilient mm -hmm. and able to, you know, now that we know what a pandemic is, uh, make sure we're, we're best in the best shape and if and when the next one uh, comes through. And that, that was really, I think COVID now, it's kind of out of everybody's mind, but when these funds were all released, when this program started, that was very much the focus of the funds is you know, what do you need? How did your community suffer? What do you need to make that up? And what can you do to make yourself stronger when and if it happens again? So. You can, Vermont League of Cities and Towns has, has this information on it. So if you go to there, you can get more information. There's a ton of information on that website. And we actually have a link. If we have time, we can click on that and uh, go around that a little bit. Um, they do focus a lot as, you know, again, this is uh, don't reinvent the wheel. Again, it's focus on tools that we already have. Um, if you haven't seen the town plan, it's, I think the link is right on the front page of the town website to get some ideas of what the select board and leadership of the town and citizens have come up with in the past that they'd like to see. Um, and I was surprised how much detail is in there actually, but also surprised by how many great ideas there were that haven't been done yet. So. Are anyone, is there anyone from those? Uh, previous organizational groups that would step up and bring the best plans forward and maybe push those through because it was a lot of like you said that those are very intense yeah. two rounds of yeah. development yeah. and not a lot of that stuff got applied yeah. so they I mean I'd say Tony Keller would be one person to speak to mm -hmm. and I don't know who headed up the second round as much but um, you might get the top you know, they, there might be somebody there that would push those and help. Yeah, and that's the point of the intake form is, yeah, now is the time to intake specific projects, right. so. 
Right. Um, if there's somebody that worked on those committees that really has a project that mm -hmm. they want to see done, put it in. Put that's, it. that's what we want to see. And that, that would be the form for that. So, One of the things that I, I was reading through that, the R3 form this week, and I, one of the things was uh, the kids did a survey. Yeah. Yeah, the, the kids yeah. did. And yeah. basically they said, we need a bike shop. Mm -hmm. So... A bike, right. a bike shop. <laughs> yeah, I actually went to a, a couple of those meetings with mm -hmm. the kids and yeah. with the library, yeah. had, and yeah. they just had so many suggestions. And then COVID hit, and mm -hmm. it just all kind of all kind of. That's a good point. I would love to see us more involved with the school when it came to that. We did a, a survey. Um, for the town also as far as you know infrastructure how safe do you feel walking to school riding your bike to school and things and we didn't get as much from the uh, schools as we had hoped but that's it would be great to get more involved i'd love to see some students in here because you're right they have some great ideas you did and, and a lot of them were actually almost free mm -hmm. they were you know things that just needed to be utilized that we yeah. kind of already have yeah. and some way of making a plan and putting it forward uh, I've been biting my tongue, but is there anyone under 40 on your committee? I'm the youngest on the committee. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Are you biting my tongue? She needs to be. Yes, so we're under 40, yes, all right. It might be, too. Maybe you're taking a decade. So could but you, no, you, no young, so. Could you do a, 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 a tailored presentation of this to the um, 10, 11, and 12th graders? Because I've always felt that we need to get them more involved yeah. in yeah. community discussion. Yeah. Yeah. In Chandler, we had a pair of kids that were a junior and a senior that were friends on the yeah. gallery committee for a while. Yeah. And two people make the second person come. When you put one kid on a committee, mm -hmm. they're, they're mm -hmm. They're, they're, they don't have confidence right, yeah. and don't keep coming. So if you could, I think, do something with this to the, that senior yeah. high group, you might find some great participation. That's yeah. a great, good idea. I think, think? Um, yeah. it would be good for them for yeah. you know, oh, civics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, exactly. let's, let's us get through this and then we'll yeah. Yeah. save our questions. Let's start. I asked a question. I just perpetuated the question asking. <laughs> Would you go back to the previous slide just for a second? Yep. Okay. Um, There's going to be a copy of this too. That yeah. That'll Great. Be okay. Website. Yeah, this will be posted Thank on the website as yeah. well. Yeah. So, do you have any questions specifically? Or? No, I'm going to shut up. Create an ongoing unfunded expense. That so yes, yeah, like so we don't want to create any unfunded liabilities for the town. Like we don't want to start a program that, that needs right. to be funded with other dollars in the right. future. Right. So a, a project that does that would not be put upon. Okay. Well, and if you, Jeff, will get to it, but the, the electronic version of this and the paper printout of it, uh, once you get to question nine, sort of list the criteria by which a project would be evaluated. All right, um, another great use for ARPA funds is supplementing other grants. So if you have another grant that you had um, that partially funds your project, um, the ARPA could be used, ARPA funds could be used to, to supplement that and, and finish up. And actually that's a good, if, if you've got funding already approved, that already proves that, okay, somebody decided this is good use of the funds and that would probably smooth that project as it goes through as well, so. Um, just a reminder, yeah. the state got a bunch of money, ARPA money, and so they've, they're doing stuff, including infrastructure, things like that. So what we're doing is not that. We're doing other people things. Projects. Right, and so this yeah. basically is saying that there's, there's already funding available for coronavirus, re, coronavirus relief. Um, that helps assistance with renters and utilities, that there's a mortgage fund that help people pay their mortgages. These are basically things that it probably won't be used for. They, they've already wasted to, to fund these. However, if you get into housing, which I thought I saw something here for... Housing um, resource. From housing and resource, yeah, that it could be used to facilitate or help with some of that as well. So, And there's all kinds of resources for these you know, housing projects, and that is a... a a, uh, a need in Vermont right now. And if you have a specific project, that, that's probably good. Now these are where um, the funds have been used in the past and 
Um, there's also a list, I think there's a link to it on the VLCT, Vermont League of City and Town websites that lists all the different projects that have been approved in Vermont towns to get another idea of pro ways that these funds could be used. And there's also a national site on an ARPA website that has every single pro ARPA project that's been submitted so far in the country. And that's categorized, so it's not as um, foreboding as it sounds, but um, it gives you some good ideas. But these are a few basic ones. Um, they can be used for water and sewer projects. I don't think that's, a, even though we have a need in Randolph, there's other funding available for that. So I don't think water and sewer is high on the list of where these will be used. Um, broadband, possibly. Um, repair, rebuild roads and bridges. Safe streets, I think, is a big one. Um, EV charging stations and improvements to municipal buildings are a few uses, and I think there's more. Yes. Um, yeah, cybersecurity, IT upgrades. Um, these are a lot of municipal projects again, uh, meeting equipment, uh, places for the community to meet and gather um, during emergencies, for example, digitized land records. That's uh, probably a need for the town. Um, not a real exciting one, but especially capital improvements to municipal buildings, ventilation, energy, um, a formal capital plan, which is pretty much what the town plan is. Um, in that the to town me would report. be reinventing the wheel, because we've done this twice, and like you said, all these yeah. ideas and plans sit yeah. in archive. Right, so and now it's now to do that again would right. just be redundant. Yeah. So these are ideas for other people too. Right. It's not just yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. You know, but yeah. In, our, in our case, yes. we, you know, we've got some really good footing to work from, and we never go back and work from those those things that were created on paper. Yeah, exactly. We so bring them forward with some yeah. of this money. Yeah. So take a look at the town plan if you're on the R three committee. <laughs> pull out some of those projects. Um, oh, recreation is big. Weatherization is is another big area it's not specific yeah. will the town be applying for for any of these no this is not okay the, right this is um, a chance for your group or for you to do the application and the work and that brings up a good point that I don't know if we address but is yeah. as you put a project in be sure to include funds for managing that project mm -hmm. because um, that that is approved but that that's very important if you have a project especially an involved project um, the town doesn't have the manpower or the uh, people power to manage that for you. There, there will be, I'm sure, somebody at the town that would be like a liaison that you report to, but the actual project management and um, managing the funds is something you should include with your project. Do you need to be a nonprofit or connected to a nonprofit to be receiving funds? How does that work? Is nope, more no, you don't. Huh? No, you don't. No. So how do you, uh, if just in terms of logistics, of proving the money spent and so forth, are there certain requirements for that? That's We're what I mean by, that. yeah, no, that's what I mean by project management. Yeah, yes. you will have to keep track of that. Mm -hmm. right. And what it's spent on and what, what you use for it. I mean, probably down to the details of receipts and invoices for where the money actually went, what you exactly. spent the money on. Yeah. Um, because you're going to need that for taxes to show that it wasn't income A and uh, yep. um, mm, yeah. it was exactly. you know, it was so, a commercial project, but you're not an entity. Right. And you could hire a bookkeeper, you could hire a, um, you know, an accountant to do that for you. But yeah, that, that's what I mean. When, it, when we say project management, that's what's included in that is, is not just spending the money on um, whatever equipment you're going to buy, but actually managing how those funds are spent. Right. So. You would ask the question whether the town was going to apply, um, and two things come to mind. Is one, we wanted to be clear that ultimately it's a select board that decides projects. We're going to make some recommendations we've um, based on the criteria that we've come up with, but ultimately it's a select board that decides what projects they want to fund. And there's also no reason the select board couldn't decide to um, come up with their own project and use some of the funds for that. There's, we haven't heard talk of that. There's no reason they couldn't. Some municipalities have not put it out to the public at all. They've just simply picked some project, they replaced a couple of culverts and moved on. Mm -hmm. So th there's no reason the town couldn't do that. At the moment, we haven't heard talk of that, but that's certainly a possibility. Yeah, good point. And yeah, I think that, like, for example, again, um, 
upgrading the IKEA equipment. You know, the, the town is in uh, pretty strong need of that. I think if you've looked at the town website, it's um, it's been there quite a while. It's not. It, it could definitely be improved. Record keeping, tax keeping, that could all be improved and save money in the long run. I think so. You might see. I, I would expect the town would have some projects that they'll apply for. I would think, but like you said, we haven't seen it yet. So. So but we're just starting. So. Okay. No, you're good. Th th you'll tell us the timeline again. Like yep, that's on the coming up. So it, yep. is the library municipal building? Yes. Our library? Yep. Yep. Oh, so that would be excluded. Nothing. No, nope, no, nope, that could be excluded. Could, oh, I thought it says. I thought you said you were avoiding. Nope. Those things. No. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh. No. Some things people. like road, I don't think it'll be, you know, road improvements, um, water and sewer. I think we actually could use it for that, but I don't think the, the select board, it's, that's not where we're, where they're looking to spend the money there because there's other funds available and grants available for that. So, so. does your committee know, is the ventilation project to make sure the library can keep staying open? Is that all that would happening? That would be a project that could be that developed and presented. But I do think there is some work that's being a, done. That's what I'm wondering if you know. I, mean, I keep asking and asking. Amy's working on that. Amy's yeah. already. Amy's on but she that's a good a person. Good example yeah. of something that, like, if they didn't have enough funds but got some money already, right. and maybe a little bit more, right. this is an opportunity exactly. to do that. Yeah. Right. Because they're back to opening all the windows. Right. And, and that's a, a big, <laughs> you know, that's a big benefit for the community. Yes. So. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Yep. How many more slides are there just so people can uh, 47. Questions? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's <laughs> three from There's our about questions. three. There's only three. You left. all now have a paper. If anyone has no. a pen, write your questions down and save them till the end. <laughs> all right, now here's the big slide right here investments that revitalize a community, making it better, safer to live for existing residents and to help attracting new ones. And so these, in my mind, are some great uses for the trails. Can I just throw something out? So if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner on any of these slides where you see that little, that's these are all from the VLCT website. So all a lot of this information came from there. Yep. So like Maria said, there's a ton of good information there. Right, outdoor recreation, trails, parks, green spaces. These are some of great uses of the funds. Big benefit for the community as a whole and individuals as well, health and safety. Um, ways to get around possibly without having to drive your car everywhere that especially if, yep exactly <laughs> uh, community <laughs> gathering spaces support for local nonprofits. we do expect um, and want to work with you know nonprofits to help them on some projects that they might not have funding for otherwise so um, and here's your question. The submission dates are now. They're, it's open now, obviously. We have the paper forms and the website is probably the most convenient way to um, submit your form because that will be tracked. And um, so it's now through the end of the year. And these dates are not in stone. I mean, if, if there's something you have that really goes beyond that, but we expect to have everything in for us to evaluate by the end of the year and then start the evaluation process and probably have something to present sometime in the first quarter of next year. Um, we have until the end of 2024 um, to decide how to spend the funds, so it's, there's no rush at all. And, and we probably, um, we're not in any rush, but again, it's, it's um, something we'd like to um, start working on and, and basically you know get the low-hanging fruit especially projects that can be done quickly and that can easily be funded with these funds and you can see results um, it'd be good to get that going so it's a two-step process this is step one if your project's approved for the next step that's when you'll have to get the real detail of who's going to do the work how much is it going to cost who's going to manage the project um, but we'll cross that when we get there. But do do think of that because from what I can see, <laughs> um, I think any projects that are submitted are going to have a pretty good chance of of being accepted, especially you know if they meet this criteria, which is pretty broad. 
And it depends on the money. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it depends right. on how much people are asking. Yeah. So our thinking was that the, we thought that we thought we could easily have requests for um, much more than 1.4 million dollars. So our thinking was rather than have people go through very detailed application process for initially, we would do a, a you could you could fill this out in five minutes online. It's pretty quick, sort of mm -hmm. quick and dirty. The idea was we collect all of the um, potential projects and uh, uh, rank them, um, and from there we the the select board, we would make a recommendation, but the select board will decide the projects to invite to submit full applications that go into much more detail. So that's, so that's what the two-step process is, this initial screening and then sort of invitation for a full application. How long is the process from you looking at applications to a project receiving money? Oh, yeah, project receiving we money. approval and money to, to move forward. It that's depends not, on the project. I mean, it could be, we don't, the funds don't need to be even allocated, in t or um, they have to, to have to be used. But not even decided so if, how to spend. Yes, this is, I mean, something was in we don't even. Yeah, we don't I mean, it could happen pretty quick. The okay. money is available now, so okay. if it's a project, it's, it's some of the money is available next now. Year. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. So, so this initial intake is open until December thirty first. So, and then at that point, we'll start reviewing the initial submittal of projects, ranking them, um, and realistically, that's not going to happen really quickly there's going to be a lot of deliberation there then we're going to ask for the full applications i think it's a lot of 2023 going through that process yeah, and we're exactly. toward the end of 2023 before projects are selected and money is being right, um, it doesn't have i, I think uh, realistically it's six to 12 months right. no okay. no all right it's six to 12 months yeah the money does is needs to all be allocated by 2026 <laughs> that's that's yeah. quite a ways away but we expect we'll have um, probably the first quarter, maybe into the second quarter, to decide you know the projects that will be moving forward, and then they'll have months to get their projects submitted. Um, so there's no rush, but it could happen fairly quickly. If you know, again, it's a smaller project, if it moved through quickly, it's you know possible to get it much quicker too. But um, it doesn't have to be done until December 31st, 2026. Spent. 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 Right. Spent. Yeah, exactly. right. So yep. let me, I want to get this straight. Um, you anticipate, give or take, the first six months of 23 to be spent to figuring out of the people who have applied by then, yep. which is, I mean, we've got this deadline at the end of this year. You're going to deliberate, and then you're going to hand it over to the select board for their final decisions. And um, uh, so what happens the second, you said some of this, some things could move forward quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but if there, if you've got a pool of applications, you know, and you're going to spend six months maybe deliberating, then that's not, then, you know, that's not, Quick. No, and I, need, I should qualify that. Nothing moves quick with town government. Right. Right. So when I say quick, it means it could be well before even, um, you know, this is saying you need to decide how you're going to spend the money by the end of 2024. But that doesn't mean we're waiting until 2024 to make that decision. We're saying that there might be projects that are approved um, well before then. Um, I don't anticipate a huge amount of projects. I really don't. From what I've seen, so I, I think, and um, and this deadline of the 31st is not a hard. That's a soft deadline. Um, if you know, but we that's the schedule we've come up with. We would like to see that so we can um, collect those this year, use probably the first quarter of next year um, to make that initial decision. Um, then we collect the details. Um, we'll probably submit a report to the select board. Um, you know. Before, but we may not, we may just wait. I mean, the initial thought we had was we're gonna wait till we get the detailed application submitted before we submit to the select board. But I'm thinking at some point we may just, you know, give them a quick update of where we are. And we've collected so many projects. Here's an idea of what we have. Here's the ones we think we're gonna move forward with. Um, but we don't have to do that. So, you know, that process isn't firmly decided yet, but um, the select board has tasked us with, with getting right. soliciting a lot of public input, and so right. we don't want to rush the project, rush the, the selection, and just we yeah. also don't want to do it just behind closed doors, and so that takes time to have um, give the public an opportunity to weigh in on, on the proposals, also. Mm -hmm. So I think realistically, we're looking at um, 
the first quarter of 2023 to review the initial submittals and, and sort of willow it down. The next quarter, the second quarter, to um, request and receive applications. And probably the third and the fourth quarter um, is more administrative stuff and select board input and public input. Mm -hmm. And I'd be surprised, even for simple projects, if, if money was being handed out before 2024. I think that's realistic. Mm -hmm. And when you say public input in that context, what are you referring to? I mean, you've got the applications, uh, you'll be substantiating, asking for substantiation, that's going to do it. And so you said, you know, the third and fourth quarter of 24, there might be public input. What would you, would you be thinking of there? Well, um, I think that we might have a public meeting to tell people these are the projects that have been proposed and that the select board has express support for and give people a chance to say not in my backyard um and things like that i think yeah, yeah. So. or say how can i help get through these slides yeah, like yes. your boss save your question 47 yeah. more oh no. my god no, this is it that's our i think i have one more slide this is the there big slide ready this is great now we there can chat go. There, there we go, go. that's what we've all been waiting for so <laughs> Uh, Jeff, it would be helpful if you would pull up the, the, this, this online intake form. It's yeah, on the town's so website. Then, yeah. and, um, so go to uh, government. Oh, so no one thing I want to show real quick, since we have just a few extra minutes, is I wanted to go right, there's a link. We're going to post this, and I think there's a link right here, which should take us. I don't know how fast the internet is here. We anticipate that there will be projects that are given to us that we will eliminate pretty quickly. It's a college. Because they have to meet the criteria that we're going to develop. This old computer, too. Where is In this page right here, there are, it tells you what the criteria are, kind of, you know? Yes. So, well, and these slides have been very helpful. So, do you think you know where it is? Yeah, we're also, like, if there's people who are saying all that didn't come to this presentation, but you know where you talked about something. Yeah. yeah, send them this presentation and send them this inquiry, right? And then they can figure out is it you know something that the committee thinks it's worth moving forward. But this is so simple for those little projects in the last five years people have talked about. Right. And that's temperature if it really is a project they're still willing to do or interested in. And that's the other piece. There may be a bunch of couple of thousand dollar projects mm -hmm. right. that will that the committee will say, okay, well we'll set aside. A little bit, but I, we know that there's at least one project that somebody's very interested in doing that's several hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So, so we're going to have to balance all of that. Right. And ultimately, it's the select board decides. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ultimately, the select board will decide. I can't make that bigger, so I just wanted to show people. This is um, there's a this is a list of all the projects that have been submitted so far in Vermont. It's the town of Bennington, and you can't see this, but there's projects in here for parks. Uh, this is on the Vermont yeah, League of Cities. Cities. So, I'm not, yeah, I don't want to take any more time tonight, but it's right here on the... Um, Resources and information. Our funded accounting, fund accounting presentation. presentation. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the first year on the website. Look for this. We've all seen this tonight. And right here. VLCT. VLCT. Vermont League of Cities. Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And it's this link right here. So it's about halfway down. This is the main page. We're on the home page. And there's all kinds of information here, but there's a really good resource as far as what the funds, if you're really interested in background, that's yes, there. But the main thing is um, some good ideas for projects. And it's really good that you can, you guys that are here can go out and tell people because we hope that a lot of people would come. Right. We're not telling anyone. No way. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of disappointing you all came. Here's our beautiful website. Okay, and right don't here, make fun of our notebooks. No, right, I just want to show the town plan is right here. So if you want a quick yeah. link to look at the town plan and see what other people have, um, you know, what, what, some, what the ideas are for the town, what we'd like to fund. Um, what what category on the website is that? So that's the main. Home, that's the main page. This okay, is, it's the home page. It's yeah. RandallVermont.org. Right yeah, that there. part of Vermont. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, under government, under town oh. advisory committees. ARPA. No click. No go down. ARPA. Is that everybody's seeing that? Okay. okay. 
It's government, and it's right here. Yeah, why, why don't you go back and go through again in slow motion so everyone knows what it's. Yeah, I went through the there. Right. So from the uh, home page home of the page. town, you go to government. Yep. Okay. Thank and then you. town advisory. And then, yep. And then town advisory committees is this where you so government and town advisory committees. Let's see. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then ARPA committee. And I think it's going to be posted on Front Porch Forum and Facebook. Mm -hmm. The link itself. Like, yes. So. And we're trying to get an ARPA link right on the main page right here, where you can just scroll down. ARPA so drop down maybe. there's links here. And at one point it was here. You could just go right to this front page and click there, but we didn't. So. So if you have a format that you're um, putting out to people to get more information, could you send it over to us at the chamber so we can put it out to our membership? Yeah. Well, well this is it. Yeah. It's this. We send this so link, the link to the electronic version of this. Right. So they can see what yep. it looks like. Okay. I'm at this step. I'm at ARPA committee. <coughs> I click ARPA committee. It brings us here. Right. This gives you some information that we talked about tonight. And right at the top, this P1 means phase one, intake and evaluation criteria. This is where your projects go. This is a double link. I think we may fix this because it brings you to this page. You can. And this tells you the different buckets that are on the form also. So we categorize the projects with the amount that you expect you'll spend. And this big purple link takes you to an Okay. electronic copy of that paper that you have in front of you there. And once this is submitted, it is recorded and tracked. And um, Go all the way to the bottom so they can see there's a submit button. So you fill all that information and you click the submit button. Yep. So the here's bottom. the estimate of project cost, um, intent to fund and community benefit, Project viability, connection to economic development, or growth, um, and submit. So essentially, you'll see that there are um, four uh, main category, four main criteria, four uh, groups. Um, uh, one is the connection to the intent of funding. So this is a get to community resiliency and, and things like that. The second one is community um, uh, benefits. Is it is it very broad or is it instead very targeted? Is it got to cover different demographics? The third one is project viability. Um, and so that's so somebody might have a great idea for a project that like maybe they want to put in a wave park. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, so they could have a great idea, but, but really is it viable? Is, is there, uh, has it been identified previously? Has any engineering or planning been done? Um, are there already resources available? You know, has a preliminary study been done? Things like that. Like how viable is it? Because people may come up with pie in the sky things. And so that's what the viability is. So we have, again, we have connection to the intent of funding, community benefit, project viability, and the fourth one is connection to economic growth. Those are the four main categories. So if I understand you right, you're not going to be, um, you'll get everything together by, you know, December 31st, or it's just, you know, or extend that if you see reason to extend that deadline a little bit. Then you'll have everything in one place, and you'll look at all the aggregate of what's been applied for and start dividing it up. Like that, rather than say, Okay, well, let's aside, let's set aside twenty five thousand for all these little projects. That's in stone. Now let's take the remainder and see what we haven't said that. Yeah, but you know we thought about that um, because that's one reason. Well, it's not one of the four um, categories. Uh, we do ask for the estimated project cost because we thought we may want to do just that. We may see that there's projects that are under ten thousand dollars. Maybe we set some of those aside mm -hmm. because they're easier to um, um, implement. Um, so we might, we, we don't want one, we don't, don't think we want one project to take up the entire one point three seven million dollars. So we may well, we may well do that. So. And we will, That's right. yeah. and we will start looking at them <laughs> off all, sure. but uh, so that we'll just kind of begin to work on them. Right. So it's not, we're, we're not, but, but we do have holidays, so we won't go as fast as we might want to, but that's, yeah. we'll start looking at them. Mm -hmm. I don't see, but I'm asking a question really, any uh, advantage to early or later submittal. Would you comment on that at all? Is that set at all relevant? No? I don't think at this point in time, by the end of the year. Yeah, well, that's it. That's, hmm. I don't think so. No, not, not really, except um, 
um, you know, ultimately the select board is going to decide. If there's a lot of public interest in a project, I think it's like more likely to get selected. And so, um, starting early and building um, public support for your project, so people are talking about it, the select board is hearing about it before they, the, these projects are even reviewed, seems to me to be a wise thing to do. Yeah, and the funds could run out. Also, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but yeah, it's like it's two miles good. of paved road, I think, is what we figured. It's one sidewalk. One point five million, yeah. The sidewalk is like eight hundred thousand. I mean, that's half the budget right there for right. you know. So. And we've never done this before, right? I mean, this is like yeah. the whole process. There's really no, no, yeah. no guidebook except some of the stuff that we've been able to look at on PLCC's mm -hmm. website. So, it's all really. Yeah. It's what we hope we can do. <laughs> and, and if you're curious, there are, you can go to a lot of the towns in Vermont and look at their plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they've, they've already been on this too. There's, they've all, some of them are ahead of us, some of them are behind. Mm -hmm. Some have already spent all the money. Right. And yeah, so like I said, some did it without getting much public input. They just decided mm -hmm. on some projects and went most from just um, thing, things like culverts and some road repairs and moved on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the committee is really interested in projects that uh, go to the heart of this, and that's resiliency. And long term, how is this going to help in the long term instead of just you know the next couple of years? That's why we're not really into um, uh, culverts and, and roads. That's not where we're going. We're looking at long term projects that will help the community grow economically and be, um, be uh, get through times that are difficult in, in the future. So uh, you, you may have noticed child care up there. So child care is a big thing as far as I'm concerned. But I think child care, child care, child care. Uh, because people can't work if, if, if their children aren't in school. So you have to look at, at the whole picture. those two avenues, child care and housing, we have other monies that are coming into mm -hmm. the community for right. mm -hmm. already right. underdevelopment stuff. So yes, mm -hmm. so but you, again this is used as kind of a supplement, you know, you, you okay. those people, you know, we, we're all very, you know, I'm very aware and I think maybe you are too that there's a child care project that's right. going into uh, work right. being worked on on yeah. 66. Yeah. So, but they, but they don't have all the monies that they need so they may Put, right. ask for monies from us. So that would be okay. Local daycares that want to up their game a little bit and availability or something, that's a good idea. So, so that's what we're thinking about. And, and health care, you know, we're thinking, you know, we, we're lucky we have Gifford, but mm -hmm. what, else, what else could we use in this town to make sure that people are getting their medicines if they can't, if, if there's road damage and they can't get out, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So think about resiliency. That's really the word. Well, I think if there's somebody in the community that would be able to put together a package for transportation, taxi mm -hmm. service, or something of that nature, because I oh, thought good twice this summer, yeah. folks off the train who didn't know that we uh, had no services. And I took uh, one couple to yeah. South Royalton, because really? they didn't realize huh. there was no place to stay. You can't even there. get an Uber here. Can you stay there? Um, uh -huh. No, you could, I couldn't get them an Uber. I couldn't get them a room to stay, because they weren't vetted through the Airbnb uh, okay. yeah. organization. So they wouldn't give them a room. Yeah, that's, that's good. Point. And it got to be really cold. And yeah, that's something we, I would think would be the a great community development is have and infrastructure for the train, you know? I mean, because you right. can come right up to Randolph from New York City. That, the, this and couple then, came and, from But the then Carolina. you're kind of stuck, <laughs> right? They thought that? they were going to Montpelier to get off and got off here. I don't know how the confusion happened. Yeah. And figured out, we'll just get a taxi. Well, <laughs> so then the other person that came here was last Halloween night after the day's activities and we cleaned up and I was headed back to my place. There was a boy that was waving me down as I went through my village pizza. And I stopped and I said, can I help you with anything? And he said, I need to get to Middlebury. How do I get a taxi? <laughs> and Mark Rosalbo ended up driving him home because I ran into somebody at the pizza shop who was taking pizza up to his party. And at 10.30 at night, he drove the kid to Middlebury. Oh, 
I heard that story. He was a student. He's a fresh. He was a freshman, and had to pick his brain. This was the closest wow. stop for yeah. him to get back to college. No, that's that's really. Yeah, I think that was. So really we need a directory. Yeah. We need some kind of directory. That we need somebody to drive. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't want yeah. that services <laughs> like that. Yep. You know. Right. right. And there, there's nobody. Nobody has service. So when you get off the train, there's no information board. At the train drop. That could be no, hard because there's really no information. Right? I like that. Yeah, that's a good story. <laughs> right. uh, where do you stay and how do you get the hell out of here? Well, it's something that the hotel's up and running. I bet they're going to have some type of service where you call and oh. someone like that. But that's two that. years down the road. Yeah. And not everybody's a hotel client. Yeah. So and the hotel isn't close to the to where the train is, and and it's going to well, be like a corporate hotel. It's not a downtown fixture. Yeah, but there is no downtown anything, so you can't like build off of something that doesn't exist. You have a yeah. downtown. But like, there's no downtown hotel. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we have we've got six Airbnbs. Yeah, we have a lot of rooms in town. It's very hard to yeah. figure out. Um, the chamber can't sanction a section in our website for Airbnbs because the Chamber of Commerce on a national mm -hmm. level does not support Airbnbs because mm -hmm. there's no regulations for them. So this vetted thing with Airbnb, which is kind of you're bonded as a guest, mm -hmm. um, that's a step in that direction that, that is recognized, but as far as, we can't do that. We need to list motels or inns or places that get state mm -hmm. inspected and so forth and have a license. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem that I've been fighting. I want to have a section where we can share everybody's Airbnb information. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a directory of sorts, somehow that we can share this information to people who come here and aren't from here. Because they get here and they don't know how to find information or they don't have internet service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's an yeah, issue. No, so that's a big need. It is that yeah. serves a broad population. Absolutely. Yeah. And it helps second it's economic development too. Yeah. That might be something. Have you talked to Mark Rosalbo? About that particular yeah. thing? I have not. Yeah. That's but it's um, I mean he would probably worth interested discussion. in discussion too. Sure. Oh yeah. That would seem like a good project though for like the chamber to do as like an ask. Give yeah, the funds yeah. and have the chamber have that funded because you guys have it. And it's not necessarily something you should ask the cameraman. It's, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily right. something that the chamber should have to ask businesses to participate in funding. It should be something that this could be. That's a great. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah, idea. that's a good one. So I think if the chamber did that, and then yep. and then the best thing about this, with the way it's sorted out, is there's other fund sources we've looked at for projects through Ridgeline or whatever and there's restrictions with how you can spend it. You can't pay somebody with the money. No. You can't pay someone with salary or stipend. No. But where this like it's encouraged to include in your project to make sure you have the funds. The management to, sources. To manage it. Because otherwise yeah. You have a great project, and nobody has the nobody has done as a volunteer. Yeah, so that's a really plan. huge yeah, yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So don't forget that part as the chamber being like, right. like who's going to manage this project afterwards, and how much is that going to cost? Yeah, right. But that, yeah, and, or just you know, putting out the query of, is there interest in yeah. an Uber service? Mm -hmm. You know, like a, we're, we're going to have a job board on the on the website, so. Oh, great. If you, it'll be on our face page. So if you wanted to put up, you know, Facebook, Uber Facebook. services needed in this region, <laughs> mm -hmm. or oh. other professions that we lack, like a dentist, we could choose dentists in this area. We could. What else is there for professionals that were they've retired? We lost. I've seen an eye doctor. Eye doctor. Eye doctor. Eye doctor. Yeah. No eye doctor. So the, you know, there's some voids in our professional services categories that could help benefit a broad population. No, it's not they care of it. Yeah. But then, <laughs> how much size that now? That was such a fantastic yeah. thing. What are the needs? What are the needs? Right. Oh, that stimulates the empty holes.